Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight we have a book launch. This year we decided to alternate uh, lectures or conversation with our guests and book launches. Tonight we have Giovanni Colacicchi, a colleague from Italy. He's half Italian, half English. And we're talking about his book titled Psychology as Ethics, Reading Jung with Kant, Nietzsche, and Aristotle. I had the pleasure to read this book, to review this book on my YouTube channel. I wouldn't say uh, uh, subscribe, like and subscribe because it's a bit cheesy, but it would be fun to say that. So <laughs> subscribe and click. Um, I like Giovanni's work for many reasons. First, because it's courageous to talk about these three guys actually four if we include Jung, Kant, Nietzsche, and Aristotle, but also because he is one of the new generation of Jungians, which I call or like to call the Neo-Jungians. And also because he's one of the students that graduated from uh, the Department of Psychosocial and Psychoanalytical Studies at the University of Sussex. So what I call the Essex School that started with Andrew Samuels and Renus Papadopoulos. Um, Giovanni graduated in 2006, supervised by Roderick Mann, Main. Giovanni, what is this book about? Well, uh, thanks so much uh, for inviting me to, to this uh, series of events. Uh, to be, I mean, I'm so happy to be part of, this, uh, of these Psychosocial Wednesdays uh, that you uh, and your colleagues are, are hosting. And... Um, Welcome everybody. Uh, so my book is a, um, an exploration of Jung's ethics. And uh, I, as, as uh, Stefano said, I worked on this topic uh, as, a, as a PhD student uh, in England. And I, I was very interested in the link between um, health and ethics. Uh, in particular, I was, I was fascinated by how Jung seems to uh, imply that to be ethical, you have to be healthy, uh, but also to be healthy, you have to be ethical. So uh, this uh, hermeneutic uh, circle uh, fascinated me from the very beginning. And uh, um, I, uh, I, um, I, I, I'm still fascinated by it. So I, I, as a philosopher, uh, I, I decided to, to see in what sense uh, Jung talks about ethics. And I explored uh, his, his, great ethical, his great ethical fathers, uh, which are uh, mo most importantly Kant and Nietzsche. Uh, these two authors, uh, I'll, I will during this talk uh, read a couple of, of, of quotes from Kant and Nietzsche, uh, and uh, I'll try to give it as brief as possible. Uh, I'll very rarely quote my own book uh, when, when strictly necessary, but um, and, uh, I'll start with, with, with the old Jung himself, uh, when he says that uh, the analyst learns that ethical problems are always intensely individual and collective rules of conduct offer at most provisional solutions, but never lead to the crucial decisions which are the turning points in a man's life. So for Jung, uh, ethics is an individual task, and uh, he, uh, um, is, uh, he, he sees uh, traditional uh, ratiocentric uh, ethical systems based uh, on exclusively on rationality and consciousness uh, as being very limited. In fact, he describes consciousness-based systems of morality as tyrannical and one-sided because in his ethical conception, the unconscious has to be included uh, in, the, in the room and uh, uh, the, the, the standpoint of the unconscious is as important as the standpoint of consciousness or as Jung says, uh, as Jung calls it, the ego. So we've got the self, which is the total personality, uh, in, which also includes the unconscious and the ego. And somehow these two entities that we both in different ways are, have to uh, find a, a, an, ethical, um, an ethical way of life. So 
I, I realize that um, in terms of the of, of consciousness, uh, Jung is essentially a Kantian. He um, he takes from Kant the notion of freedom, and he uh, uh, develops his his uh, the idea that. Uh, we, we need a strong ego and a free ego uh, to be able to be uh, to be uh, ethical uh, at all. So um, essentially, uh, he, he uh, for example, he, uh, Jung says that uh, if the ego is assimilated by the self, uh, so if we can't distinguish uh, our consciousness with the unconscious, this is well, this will be a psychic uh, catastrophe. So to avoid this, which he calls inflation. Uh, we need, uh, um, he says, we need certain virtues like attention, conscientiousness, patience. So he, he's already using the language of virtues. Now, obviously, a patient uh, walks into an analyst's room and wants to feel better about himself, about his emotions or her emotions. And uh, it's interesting if we look back at the, the, uh, the, what the, the, the father of Jungian analyst says, uh, we immediately we're already stepping into the world into the world of ethics right from the start, uh, and so here we go. Um, we we have to assimilate the unconscious, make it conscious, but we need a strong ego to do that. And the ego is free. Uh, Kant teaches Jung the fact that uh, the ego can be free from compulsion, from uh, determinism, from the world of cause and effect. And uh, I won't obviously uh, go and uh, describe uh, Kant's moral philosophy in detail, but clearly uh, Jung is aware that uh, the, the, the foundation of, of freedom uh, that has been put, put forth by Kant is the essential uh, ground on which, uh, on which to move. Even in terms of the actual, so uh, from a general perspective, uh, he takes freedom from Kant, but even in the sense of uh, the um, interaction between analysts and patient, uh, we, we all of all of you, or the many Jungians here know, obviously that for Jung, uh, the, the, the analyst and the patient should consider themselves uh, on equal terms. And maybe we can talk about that a bit further on late, later on. But uh, clearly, uh, again, we see how Jung is a Kantian when, for example, he says. Uh, um, he writes, um, uh, not, uh, not all patients, this is Jung writing in 43, not all patients allow themselves to be condemned to infantile inferiority. Uh, so uh, the, 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 there is a the, the, there's a necessity for a, an equality between the therapist and the um, an analyzant. And this is clearly, uh, is clearly again Kant's uh, discussion on uh, um, enlightenment when he says, when Kant says it's so comfortable to be a minor, uh, if I have a book that understands for me, a spiritual advisor who has conscience for me, a doctor who decides upon a regimen for me, and so forth, I need not trouble myself at all. I need not think if only I can pay. Others will readily undertake this irksome business for me. So here we, we should all be reminded as Jungians that if, if uh, the, the, the notion of freedom and intellectual freedom is really at the center of of Jung's thought uh, and, and that he takes it from, from Kant. Uh, moving on to um, Nietzsche, uh, I noticed how the, the, crucial, uh, the crucial idea of an individual ethics is really uh, a Nietzschean idea and that Jung um, is um, again fascinated by how Nietzsche uh, breaks out of this of, of the collective uh, mass-minded approach to, to, to morality and tries to build his own, his own uh, uh, with, with many difficulties, his own vision of, of, the, of the Ubermensch or of the, of the overman uh, who doesn't need others to tell him what to do. And Jung, when he's reading the Zarathustra by Nietzsche, gets very, very excited and uh, clearly, um, it says uh, we are um, we are here uh, we are here in the presence of a new ethics. So he he claims, for example, uh, that um, whatever is vital is of moral importance, and he's doing that while he's commenting on Nietzsche's work. And uh, he uh, he says, uh, when, as a therapist, uh, I sometimes have to. The only question that I have to ask myself is not if something is good or bad, but is it vital? Does it help life? 
And then in line with Nietzsche's critique of morality, he concludes, we have plenty of moral ideas which impoverish life. We think it is even good to do so, uh, but then we discover that we do it not for any moral reasons, but out of sheer cowardice, just cowardice and pretext. We hide our cowardice behind uh, moral laws. Uh, I hope you can still hear me. Uh, maybe the internet connection went down a minute, but I hope you can hear me. So again, uh, Nietzsche's bravery and, and courage is, uh, is, entirely, um, uh, is entirely admired and entirely endorsed by Jung. And again, as Jungians, we, we must always uh, remember that we are also Nietzscheans and, and with all the difficulties that that entails. And again, we can have a discussion about that maybe later. Um, I would, um, the interesting thing is that it, whereas in Nietzsche we have the resentment between the, those who follow herd morality and, and master morality, so two different typological uh, figures that, 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 that for Nietzsche uh, look at each other uh, and, and sort of face each other, in Jung the, the resentment is actually uh, inside the, the same person. Uh, in fact, in a famous uh, a quote, uh, Jung writes uh, that um, uh, that um, it, sometimes we feel a sense of moral inferiority, and that this does not come from a collision with the generally accepted and, in a sense, arbitrary moral law, but from the conflict with one's own self. So, uh, again, uh, echoing Nietzsche, when Nietzsche writes that the man of resentment uh, is not sincere or, na or, or, or naive, uh, and he is not honest or candid with himself, he, he hides in dark corners, secret passages and hidden doors. So this some false security that sometimes for Nietzsche, for Nietzsche uh, men uh, have looked for, uh, for Jung can, is, is, a, is a quality that can occur in anybody. Uh, with, with the good, with the good uh, no, news that for Jung we can individuate and we can step beyond this uh, mor morality of resentment. Uh, as, as Stefano mentioned, I also talked about Aristotle uh, because um, I found that Jung was um, uh, also an Aristotelian, <laughs> so it's not already, uh, it's difficult to, to, to balance the fact that he's a Kantian and a Nietzschean, but in a way, uh, Aristotle is what a is, it makes Jung capable of balancing these two figures, because uh, for Aristotle, we, 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 have to, um, we have to always find a balance between reason and the emotions, which clearly in Jung can be translated as consciousness and the unconscious. So as, as, as you know, uh, for Jung, both, as I mentioned earlier, both sides uh, of ourselves should be taken into, into, into account. Um, so I, I, again, I won't, I won't go into too much more detail, but I would, I would like to mention that the notion of habituation is also very important and sometimes overlooked uh, by Jungians. Uh, we have a, a quote where Jung says, it is obviously uh, the Aristotelian, sorry, I would, I would add notion of habituation is important in Jung. Uh, even if Jung doesn't quote Aristotle in this passage, he says, um, it is not enough for the patient to know how his illness arose and, and whence it came, uh, for we seldom get rid of an evil merely by understanding its causes. Um, crooked, the crooked paths of, of a neurosis lead to many obstinate habits, and uh, for, for that, uh, we need to replace them with other habits. Uh, habits are won only by exercise, Jung writes, and appropriate education is the sole means to this end. Uh, you know that there are uh, uh, loads of books now on, on habits, habit formation, and this all, all goes back to Aristotle, but is, is also present in Jung. Um, I also have a fourth chapter in my book, which talks about the notion of evil, uh, and uh, this, uh, the, the notion of evil in Jung is uh, immense. Uh, again, I can't, uh, I, I, I hope some of you might be interested to, to read what, what I talk about in the actual book, but certainly we mustn't confuse evil with the shadow. Uh, for Jung, the shadow is uh, his, his, his idea of a moral psychology of evil. Uh, moral psychology is, a, is an academic field where uh, people study how people make decisions. And for Jung, often we are influenced by our shadow and we also how we judge others because often we project our shadow onto others. 
So he he is um, he believes in a in a in a in the notion of evil, Jung, but he also, in a sense, uh, relativizes it uh, and tries to go deeper into this notion and, and to understand it better, uh, precisely through this uh, invention of of of, sh of the sh of shadow, which isn't as a, as I should add an invention because it it comes directly from the Christian uh, idea of sin. So uh, as you will have understood from this hopefully not too uh, co convoluted introduction, uh, what I essentially was trying to do in this book and have tried to do is to show how Jung's ethics is a very delicate balance of different, um, of different uh, ethical schools. And uh, I have tried to avoid using uh, words such as consequentialism, deontology, virtue ethics in my book, because I feel that uh, every school has its limitations, obviously, and sometimes it's more interesting to see from which author another author is, is mostly influenced instead of um, trying to tick all the boxes of all the schools uh, which may or may not, uh, he may or may not belong to. But certainly, Jung is a, uh, a Kantian, a Nietzschean, uh, he has an Aristot Aristotelian sensibility, um, and also, uh, as, as, as has been written by, by many, many scholars, uh, and, and it was, as is widely known, a Christian, uh, not a, a dogmatic Christian, uh, but uh, he, he still, um, in some way, uses his Christian sensibility to attenuate the, uh, the Nietzschean uh, inflated, um, inflated gestures towards uh, going beyond good and evil. Um, in, in particular, he is critical of Nietzsche's statement uh, that we should go beyond good and evil. Uh, he, he says that when you do something evil, uh, you are not be going beyond good and evil. You are doing something evil. <laughs> it may be necessary in, in certain circumstances to do it. It may be healthy. It may be vital. But it, it, it's no, there's absolutely no advantage in, in, in stop. In, in not calling it evil anymore, uh, you feel guilty for what you've done, but perhaps you, you have also evolved. So uh, there's a very famous quote where Jung says, he directly talking to Nietzsche, but probably also to himself, uh, even uh, beyond good and evil, uh, when we feel beyond good and evil, in fact, uh, we, we are not. We are still moving within a moral uh, landscape. Uh, uh, if if uh, if uh, if we still if I still have uh, uh, two or three minutes, uh, I'd just like to mention the the, the notion of uh, individuation. Uh, you, have, and, you, need, you have as much time as you want. We don't need to rush. Just take okay. as much time as you want. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Okay. No, it's uh, thank you. Uh, I I will um, I will in this case quote myself. Uh, I'm just reading the, the from the final chapter where I where I try to pull together the various threads of the book, and uh, I, I write that um, we can acquire a deeper understanding of Jung's psychological model, because Jung is, is a psychologist, of course, uh, although I feel he's also an, an, a hidden or an ethicist in disguise. Uh, if, if we interpret him, if we interpret Jung's psychological model as a psychoethical model, Jung does not only attempt to describe how our psyche works and how to cure it when it does not work, but he also provides an answer to the ethical problem, uh, which is uh, Socrates' problem. Uh, what ought I to do? For Jung, the answer to this question is individuate. Become a, quote, open quote, a psychological individual as a being distinct from the general collective psychology. Uh, this is uh, Jung in, in already, already in 1921, okay? In, in, uh, so uh, beginning of the 20th century where we have uh, mass movements of, uh, that will lead to uh, you know, uh, death and destruction and in part already have. So he, he is really interested in, in the idea that ethics is an individual task. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I'm following again from the quote, uh, individuation is also separate, separating not only from the collective consciousness or collective psychology, but from the collective uh, unconscious. Uh, one does not individuate despite society. Uh, individuation is not individualism, uh, but in society, uh, just as one does not develop despite the unconscious, but by integrating its power. For Jung, 
an individuated person transcends and overcomes both the one-sidedness of conscious morality or immorality, uh, the Nietzschean pose, um, and uh, the immoral pull of the unconscious. Uh, the unconscious is an immoral entity. Individuation involves relying on a strong and free ego, uh, which is capable of confronting one daily, one's daily duties. This is obviously the Kantian side of Jung. Jung's individuation is not individualistic, since he recognizes that cultural norms are needed uh, in order to develop as an effective member of society. And then um, I go on, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to read too much. Uh, I just uh, um, wanted to say that obviously in my book, uh, I, I, I am left and I, I leave you with some questions as well. Uh, some of the questions that I that I, that's the unresolved issues and, and things that I haven't been able to really solve in, 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 in trying to understand Jung's ethics and clearly also in trying to understand myself. Uh, I, I have two or three questions that, I, that I've left, uh, sort of uh, it was a work in progress. Uh, so is a Jungian analyst, uh, a, a should a Jungian analyst be a teacher of ethics? Uh, should, um, should patients of a Jungian analyst have to follow necessarily a Jungian ethical vision in order to be cured, uh, because Giovanni, there's a bit of a paradox there. Giovanni uh, says, yes. Giovanni, you are a bit glitchy. Could you oh. please repeat? Uh, yeah, you, uh, your internet is not yes. very good. Yes, sorry. Uh, I would ask two things. If you can slow down a bit yes, for those yes. that are not mother tongue, Yes, yes. It's very interesting, but between the glitching and your fast, uh, fastness, it's yes, not easy yes. to follow. So can you just repeat the three questions? Sure, so sure. Slowly yes. and nicely. Sure. Sorry about the, um, sorry about the internet um, uh, glitches uh, and also if I was speeding too much. Um, so uh, I, I, as I said, I feel that there are some unresolved uh, uh, questions related to Jung's ethics, and I've highlighted a few of these. Um, one is, uh, for example, if uh, uh, Jungian analysts should be considered teachers of ethics, and if so, is that ethical? Um, also, I ask, uh, my, I ask uh, uh, if, uh, um, if one should, if Jung is right, uh, following Nietzsche, that one should learn to express one's whole and evolving personality, how can this be done without harming others? Uh, is individuation really a task uh, for all, as Jung sometimes seems to suggest, or will it inevitably only be the goal of higher types, uh, which is uh, an expression used by Nietzsche and that uh, Jung quotes a couple of times. Uh, how could the moral language used by therapists be effectively improved to include a wider and more refined understanding of ethics. And then again, and finally, is the belief in an objective moral order, uh, in some cases uh, that coincides with the belief in God, uh, really compatible with a psychological approach to ethics? Uh, and so here we have uh, various, various issues, various questions. And I believe that in some cases, Jung is slightly ambiguous uh, and in a sense, tries to have his cake and eat it at the same time. Uh, he is uh, not entirely a relativist. He is not entirely an objectivist or a realist, uh, but he, um, he tries to, 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 to sketch out a, a picture of a healthy and ethical life, uh, which certainly uh, commands our, our attention and our, and, our, and our interest. Thank you, Giovanni. It was very interesting. Very inspiring. Take a breath, drink a bit of water before <laughs> we start the round of, of questions. Um, I would like to ask you one question, actually five questions, because I would like if you could briefly um, go through each chapters. You, yes. Your book has four chap five chapters plus the conclusion. The first chapter is titled Morality, Freedom and the Ego. Yes. Kantian legacy. What is the Kantian legacy? 
Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Kant is uh, teaches Jung uh, the, the fact that uh, we can um, we can uh, and we should be autonomous. Uh, we can't. Uh, um, the great the great revolution, the great Kantian legacy, which ironically even Nietzsche follows, is that uh, any system of morality based on a on an external authority or an ex or even an external principle such as pleasure or God Himself or anything uh, that is not that doesn't come from within within the sense of duty is uh, uh, illegitimate. Uh, and so Jung realizes, even at the age of 12, when he has his neurotic phase, uh, he faints uh, uh, in middle school and he, see, he, lay, he lazes about, uh, walks around uh, the, the hills and, 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 and basically uh, skips school for various months, realizes, uh, and I, I talk about that in, in, in the introduction, realizes that you, you have to do your duty. So if you're not, um, if you're not conscientious, uh, and he was, after all, a Swiss, so he must have had the, the value of conscientiousness uh, in some way built into him. Uh, if you're not conscientious, uh, you will end up uh, at least, at the very least, neurotic, and if not worse, even possibly psychotic. So uh, Jung um, is, is, has this Kantian uh, approach to, to life and uh, was an, a formidable uh, work. I mean, he, he wrote an am amount of work that is astonishing, as well as seeing patients and traveling around the world. So he, he definitely didn't, wasn't a lazy uh, person. Um, so yeah. Chapter, I, I, yeah. Chapter two is titled Ethics, Elf and the Self, Nietzschean Legacy. Couple of words about this chapter. Well, here I I, I, I look at how ambiguous Jung is towards Nietzsche. Uh, as I said, uh, the self uh, is uh, Nietzsche's invention in a in a way, uh, and uh, Jung uh, uh, takes it from him in, in many respects. But um, Jung likes to tease Nietzsche a lot in his in his book in his work. Uh, he he call, he calls him a he teases his his mustache he teases his tics his his craziness and essentially put, positions himself as a healthy Nietzsche as a, as a Nietzsche with wife and kids and a job and a stable job which Fred Jung uh, the poor old Nietzsche was unable to 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 ha to, ha to keep and uh, having said that in fact he is incredibly Nietzschean in his approach to to ethics as I discussed earlier. So uh, he is, um, and, and clearly he is also scared uh, that he might be confused uh, by, by, with Nietzsche. He, he has a grand, grandiose and emphatic and inflated dimension, uh, Jung himself, that resembles Nietzsche very much. So uh, the Nietzschean legacy is the legacy of, of, a, of a rather ungrateful um, uh, although it must be said that in a letter that Jung wrote at the end of his life, uh, he did he did say uh, he wrote very kind words towards Nietzsche and said, "He's I, I I'm afraid I don't have uh, the quote. Uh, I possibly I possibly don't have it here, but I might have it here. Um, yes, actually I, I do have it." Uh, in this letter that Jung wrote uh, at the very end of his life, uh, in fact, uh, he said, um, I could not help being deeply impressed by Nietzsche's indubitable inspiration. He was sincere, which cannot be said of so many academic teachers to whom career and vanity mean more than the truth. So he really, at, at deep down, at the, at the bottom of his heart, had a deep admiration for Nietzsche and maybe felt a bit guilty for having uh, often uh, slightly teased him in his seminars and books uh, without obviously uh, ever denying his business. Thank you. I invite everyone to send us questions. I, you talked already about Aristotle and Jung, so I will skip uh, asking a couple of words on chapter three that is titled Character, Virtue and Psychoethical <laughs> Types, Aristotle and Jung. But I'm interested in chapter four, humility, evil and the shadow of the Christian legacy. In a couple of words, what is the Christian legacy? Well, uh, apparently uh, there is a contradiction uh, between uh, the idea that ethics is an individual task and, and affirming a Christian uh, vision. Now, from the point of view, from a dogmatic point of view, uh, the, 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 the contradiction is, is, is enormous. 
So obviously a, a therapist should never impose a religion, any religion or even any atheism or agnosticism onto his patient. From a more ethical, more general point of view, and Jung clearly didn't, he, he, he even claimed to make, uh, a, 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 in, a, a, in one quote, he says, I make a, a, a Jew more, uh, more Jew, a Christian more Christian, a Protestant more Protestant, an atheist more atheist. So he, he wants people to become more what they already are. So it's not that Jung wants to brainwash anyone. However, uh, he is, um, he is um, a Christian in the sense that he believes in this, uh, in a sense that uh, what is good and bad, uh, uh, only God knows. Now, only God knows is an expression that even an atheist can use. Uh, and uh, so Jung's Christian legacy, I think, can be summed up in the idea that uh, which we can't really go deep down into the heart of somebody. And uh, the, uh, the good intentions uh, and, and the, the, the attempt to bring more good than bad into the world, uh, represented by the figure of Christ, uh, and to, a, to a, even to a certain extent, uh, Job himself uh, is uh, is Jung's uh, Christian leg um, Christian side. So there is a there is an ethical uh, dimension, a very strong ethical dimension to Christianity, which Jung um, embraces. Chapter five: Post Jungians on Jung's ethics. There are many post Jungians that wrote on Jung's ethics. I would like to ask you a couple of words on Mario Trevi. Why was Mario Trevi so important? Well, um, Mario Trevi is well, very well known in Italy, uh, uh, maybe the most famous Italian Jungian. Uh, he um, was extreme, an extremely knowledgeable um, uh, philosopher, in fact, uh, also, as well as being an analyst. And he, uh, I find that his general approach towards therapy uh, to be relevant to ethics uh, because he mm, uh, wanted to de-dogmatize uh, Jung, uh, sometimes even too much, I, I believe, but uh, in general, Trevi tries to, um, uh, to have a hermeneutic approach uh, to, towards Jung. And uh, uh, when, when he, he, he endorses Jung's idea that mm, uh, Jung's perspectivism, the idea that uh, the, the personal equation of the analyst should always be taken into account. As Jung wrote, the analyst is in analysis as much as the patient is. And Mario Trevi uh, completely agrees with this position and, in fact, even claims that every discourse on the psyche, so every time that the analyst says something about the psyche, is also inevitably a discourse of the psyche. So it's a self-confession, a revelation of the analyst's own limitations, own, own prejudices. So uh, Trevi, yeah, is a, is a, I, I, di I didn't dedicate many pages to Trevi uh, or even many paragraphs in fact, but um, he, he's, a, he's a very subtle critic and he's, he even talks about the subtle tyranny of the self at a certain point uh, to, to, to show that uh, we must even try sometimes to not be too obsessed by, by individuation as inevitably we, we are as, as Jungians. So no, I, I, I really admire Trevi a lot, but um, I, I, that's about, well, I, won't, I don't you. want to say more than that. Uh, we have four questions already. One is from Fran Cerlo. How does a Jungian deal with classifying a patient client as sick or psychotic, et cetera, stay equal and ethical? We have to remind that you are not a clinician, you're a scholar. So there is a difference how you will answer this question, right? Absolutely. And, and could I ask you to repeat the, 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 the last part of the question? Because I understood the yes, beginning. You can, also, you can also go to the chat. So if you want to read it, oh, yes. if it's easier. Because sometimes when we read it, how does you deal oh, with yes, classifying yes. a patient client as sick or psychotic, therefore stay equal and ethical? Yes, uh, yes, um, yes. Uh, this is, uh, well, uh, yeah, as you said, Stefano, I'm not uh, a clinician. Uh, I, I, I have studied Jung uh, from an academic point of view. Uh, so um, clearly today, the, 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 the understanding that we have of um, mental illness uh, has, has evolved since uh, 61, the date in which Jung uh, died. Uh, and so, um, I mean, um, uh, Jung, uh, 
I, I believe his great contribution uh, is towards neurosis, towards the understanding of how moral conflict and moral uh, dilemmas can produce neurotic, uh, neuro 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 neurotic uh, approach to life. Uh, in terms of psychosis, uh, uh, it, the, the, the issues are more complex. Uh, some, as, as I discussed um, a few weeks ago with Stefano, uh, Jung has also been uh, sometimes described as having had a psychotic breakdown and other scholars say that that is not the case. But uh, I would, I don't feel, uh, I don't feel really, mm, I have, I don't feel I am able to answer this question uh, completely. I, I would just say that clearly a Jungian analyst of the 21st century uh, should always while dealing with 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 the with the, with the difficulties of a, of a patient, while dealing with the with the blocks and 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 uh, and uh, dilemmas and and relational difficulties and dreams of a patient, should also, in some cases, when when things uh, when when necessary, should 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 work in in a, in, a, in a team of other of, of other specialists, which can include also uh, psychiatrists. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, at the end of the day, Jung himself was a psychiatrist, so it would be ironic if, if Jungians today were, did not uh, collaborate with, with other practitioners, even of other schools. I won't uh, say let Freudian. Me, but... Let me step in. I think the question was more about the equal and ethical. Um, I can tell you as a trained psychoanalyst from the Carl Gustav Jung, uh, the pathology is very important. Is very important because at the end of the day, this is what we look at. But the work we do is not through the pathology. The pathology is important as a clinician, but it's not everything. Psychiatrists look at psychology and they give medication for that uh, pathology. But the Jungian clinician look as a wider symptomatology and a wider symbolism that obviously comes through symptoms. So to stay equal and ethical could mean uh, many things. Equal would be to have an objective look at what, at what is in front of you, um, and then and then let it let it happen, let it work. Um, question from Leslie Leslie Gardner. Um, I'm wondering how you, Giovanni, thinks about Jung images resentment. Is you can read the question yourself if this helps you. Uh, I, I haven't uh, got it actually in my chat. Uh, I, I hope it, I can stay for when the questions are open, but I'm wondering how E, so it means you, think uh, Jung imagined resentment. His, his approach towards sen sentiment? No, resentiment. Oh, resentiment. If you... resentiment, resentiment. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, uh, resentment is a a key Nietzschean no notion, uh, which uh, for Jung, for Nietzsche, is at the uh, is is at the base uh, of um, of uh, the, the of many moral systems. So through resentment, through the envy of stronger of it, of stronger, healthier individuals. Uh, uh, a morality of, in particular, Jung is, uh, Nietzsche thinks about Christian morality, a morality of being humble, of being weak, of being friendly towards others, uh, for Nietzsche comes from weakness. So resentiment is, uh, resentiment is something that uh, is a, has a very critical um, a, a turn in Nietzsche's vocabulary, um, as I'm sure the, what, what the person asking the question knows very well. In Jung, resentment, interestingly, is uh, uh, towards oneself. So towards one's potential for Jung, it's possible to feel resentment in, the, in an analogy uh, of the way uh, in which some people, according to Nietzsche, felt resentment towards stronger, uh, braver uh, people. So uh, we we admire uh, we admire some quality some quality in ourselves which is not, which is germinating and which perhaps we should not feel resentment towards but we should feel uh, an urge to, to to get there. Now there are two more questions. One is from Paul, and one is from Bernard. I sense they both want to ask you this question live. I'll go, even though Bernhard is the better philosopher. Um, you'll pardon me, Giovanni, I tend to be a hopeless relativist. And this is a relativist question. Um, 
in my own work with philosophers, because I tend to not frame my background in terms of specific thinkers, moving from one to another is often not a problem in my own classes and such. And sometimes it's a struggle for me in reading people like um, Igerich, who is very strict about the distinctions. If Jung crosses from philosopher to philosopher because of his background, as he does with a lot of things, does it feel as though he has a consistent ethic? Or is it possible to think in those terms, to separate from the given frames? Well, uh, thanks for the question. I, I have uh, been struggling um, desperately, really, with this question uh, for a long time. Uh, and uh, I, I feel that the problem with Jung is that if we try to create a precise model, a uh, sort of box, uh, an, an ethical box where you, you, the ingredients go in and then the cake is, 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 comes out of the box, a sort of machine uh, to, to, make, uh, to make you ethical, we, we, will, we will always fail because Jung's greatness is in his capacity to, to keep things together, which seem to be opposite. So I, uh, I, I really don't think that it's possible to, that I think there, there are times, as I even write in my book, where we will be more healthy than ethical, uh, times where we will be more ethical than healthy, uh, times where we will be, we will have a calm Aristotelian approach to, to, to things and others where we will be uh, in a Nietzschean frenzy. Uh, so uh, I don't think Nietzsche really wants to, to definitely um, solve what cannot be solved. Uh, we are complex Shakespearean human beings, all of us. So, uh, in fact, the, the, in, the inconsistencies and contradictions in Jung uh, are rather... Um, they, I, I, I've, I've come to... I've decided that I, I, I don't want to solve them all because I, otherwise uh, I will go mad trying to, 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 to find a perfect model of, of Jung's ethics, which I, I don't believe is really possible to, to do. Bernard? Uh, yeah, uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, first, it's related to individuation. Um, there's this famous quote from Jung, uh, where he says that individuation is indispensable, not only as a therapeutic necessity, but, but as a high ideal, an ideal of the best we can do. So uh, in my reading, this is, uh, 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 this is an ethical point. Uh, and Luigi Zoya wrote one of the two big books, I, I must say, about ethics and, psycho and analytic psychology, uh, says that healing is an ethical art and every ethical act is indirectly and a therapeutic act. Can you comment on that and maybe comment as comment as well on uh, 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 and how how to uh, put your book uh, between between or uh, uh, in, in contrast to Erich Neumann and uh, Giovanni Zoya, uh, Luigi Zoya. Uh. Well, uh, on, eth on, on, on healing being an ethical art, uh, I certainly agree because uh, the, 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 a good therapist will, will always respect the individuality of the patient, something that which Jung uh, incessantly uh, mentions. Uh, we'll, always, we'll, we'll try not to impose a certain course uh, of, li of life onto the other person. Uh, but try to see where the person is going and maybe without realizing it. So looking at dreams, uh, a more objective uh, element uh, of, of the psyche than, than what a person says about themselves. So yeah, definitely healing is an ethical art. Uh, and, um, and the best we can do uh, that you mentioned is uh, a very good definition of individuation. Uh, be the best... Uh, best that person that you can be out of the material out of the limitations that uh, we all we all possess um i don't um i wouldn't know uh, how to position myself 
uh, towards um, uh, Zoya's work, which I don't know sufficiently well, uh, towards Neumann. Uh, Jung admires his 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 attempt to 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 to, to sketch out a new ethics, uh, but he he is also uh, possibly um, a little bit worried that Neumann might uh, systematize uh, his work uh, too rigidly. Um, but in fact, Neumann, uh, you should talk to my colleague. Uh, um, uh, friend, uh, Fiorentino Polipo, uh, <laughs> who is here, um, he, uh, he, uh, he has, is more, knows much more than I do about Neumann's work uh, on ethics. Um, he, I know he's working on, on, on it now um, and has written about it. But um, Jung's introduction to Neumann's work uh, is, is, a, is, a, is, a quite, is quite a good summary of what Jung thinks about ethics. Uh, it's not really an introduction. <laughs> it doesn't really say that, that, that much about Neumann's work it, itself, but it does give us a, a quite a clear, simple version of, of Jung's idea of, of ethics being about, uh, involving a balance of consciousness and the unconscious. So I, I did quite uh, analyze that quite a bit in my book, the introduction to Neumann, but I, I'm, not a, I'm not an expert of Neumann's thought um, of its, uh, in its own right. Uh, last question, maybe. Uh, when you wrote that book and afterwards thinking uh, about it, uh, would you say, or uh, would you say, that we are at the at the start of an ethical turn? Let's let's uh, uh, put it. Uh, you mean as, as in general, as as Jungians, or in general? Firstly, as Jungians, and secondly, in general. I mean, uh, nowadays we have a lot uh, of openly discussions about ethical topics in the public. And uh, well, if I may, uh, if I may say something that goes unfortunately against my own book uh, is uh, I, I read um, recently the Second Mountain by David Brooks. Uh, uh, the, the New York Times uh, columnist, uh, and I was quite fascinated because he met, he points out that from the 60s to the to the two, to the year 2000, uh, we have had a, a, a very strong emphasis on the individual, and uh, Jung is definitely prescient pre in 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 noticing how uh, ethics should should focus on the individual. Uh, interestingly, though, in, in the second mountain, which I have here, uh, but it doesn't matter. But anyway, uh, in, in the second mountain, Brooks says that now we may be actually going back or we should go back to a collective morality, uh, a sense of community, which uh, the individualism of the 60s, 70s and even more 80s and 90s has gone too far. So perhaps some of the points that Jung makes are uh, outdated. Uh, however, a kind friend said, mentioned to me that maybe it's so out, out of date that it's possibly back into date again, because with the, with, the, uh, with the cultish way of thinking that many people are now reverting back to, possibly we need Jung more than ever. So I'm, to, to, to answer your question, I would say that, that we are, there is an ethical revolution, uh, certainly at the moment, but some of the things that Jung says can be a bit 20th century, uh, a bit related to, to as, as a sort of antidote to mass mindedness. However, we haven't got rid of mass mindedness yet. Uh, we, we might need a, a stronger sense of community as David Brooks points out, and, and as Jung le less frequently points out, uh, but we still need a focus on the individual possibly more than ever. So we, we can still find a lot of useful um, ideas in Jung and in, in Jungian therapy on, in that respect. If I can add my point of view on this, um, of course, uh, we can talk about Bauman, you know, liquid modernity, Giddens, um, self-reflexivity, Beck, Ulrich Beck and his book or his work on individualization, not individuation, individualization. 
And since the mid eighties, they really work on this, on the fact that men and women were becoming homoptionists. So going beyond the freedom of being unchained from, you know, the chain to the wall, but actually choosing who you are beyond gender, beyond uh, the nation, beyond uh, religion. And maybe, maybe this is also what the book you mentioned uh, is about. But as you know, in, in a paper where, um, which is titled The Consequence of Freedom, I really write about this. Jung individuation is fundamental nowadays at the beginning of the 21st century because we live in a broken individualized society where that fantasy of freedom was a mere fantasy of going beyond something as a projection. But in an individualized or broken individualized society, we need individuation to really become free. Free from what is something that we might leave for another webinar. Um, there is a comment by Dennis Merritt. I work with a philosopher really into Aristotle and he had a dream where he could take only two books into the military. One was, one was on Aristotle and the second was a book by Dostoevsky. Giovanni, <laughs> thank you. Congratulations for this book. It's a very important contribution to the field uh, especially because you are so young. So we hope we will be able to read and buy many other books from you. Um, we see you in two weeks when Luigi Zoya, we, we talked about him, but, but when Luigi Zoya will actually uh, be here with us and it's amazing that Luigi accepted. Um, in a month, we will present another book by Rene Cunningham. So. Thank you so much, Devani, and good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for, for this very, very pleasant evening. Yeah. See you, everybody, in two weeks with Luigi Zoya. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.